Boxes of bees, 10,000 per box and about three pounds of bees. It's time to install. Hello everybody, welcome back to the Jerby Apiary. Well, it's time to get some hives ready for a fresh package installation. Of course, the chickens are up there to help accommodate everything, but the cathedral hive need a little bit more work done to it before I can do the full installation. And that work predominantly consists of rubbing some beeswax onto the points of the cathedral hive frames so that they have an area that the bees can recognize as this is where you're supposed to build. Chickens, always helpful. Actually not, but you know, they don't cause any harm, so that's fine. So I tried a variety of different ways of getting the beeswax on there. One of them was just rubbing the wax directly onto the frame. The other ways was melting the wax on with a variety of different tools. The hive itself is supposed to be split in the middle whenever you're doing the installation using this divider board. That way they overall build the honeycomb and the brood chamber towards the front of the hive. Using a melting method using uh, just a lighter actually worked pretty well. I did try to go to some more extremes using a more blowtorch type, which could overdo it quite a bit, but in any case, I got the wax onto the point so that they have an area that's a substrate to say, okay, build here and build out. That was about all the preparation that was necessary for the Cathedral Hive. So the next step was driving down to Pennsylvania to Draper's Super Bees down in Millerton, PA, which is where I tend to get my package bees whenever I order them in enough time. They're very helpful there and they have a lot of great product and I definitely recommend checking them out if you're on the northern tier of Pennsylvania or southern tier of New York. Here the bees are in the back of the SUV and I have a bar to help secure so they don't slide around but the fact there are three of them that's uh, really not necessary because they're pretty good. Beautiful drive, beautiful countryside going the whole way down through there. There's the queen cage with all the bees clustered around. We got to fish her out of there and get her installed in the hive so they know where to go. And that is your inverted sugar water can that has holes on the bottom for them to eat from. You're just curious about absolutely everything, aren't you? That's not for you. Step one of doing the installation, whenever you have three together like this, I like to break them all up so you don't just have them all together and trying to do them individually when they're linked. So just using the hive tool, I pry off the support structure so you have three individual hives instead. Next step, I started picking out which frame I was going to use for the queen cage since I have to suspend that on there. And I used a frame that had a queen cage on it before that already has a spot where I can install her. After you pry off the lid, you can take out the sugar water can and the queen cage is suspended by uh, some type of string inside of the overall bee package. And of course, there are a lot of bees hanging on there because of the pheromones and everything else. The idea is that the queen stays in that queen cage because that queen may not be the one that was with those bees originally. And they need to get used to her because sometimes there could be some fighting and not recognizing those pheromones there. The queen color is a yellow gear. That means that any queens that were born or from this year, if you mark them, they put a yellow dot on them. That way you can recognize their age. Candy side. There's the candy. There's the cork. That's the side you want to pop out so they can chew through that and let her out. She has attendant bees in there. So you want to make sure you install this horizontally, not vertically where uh, she can die and plug the entrance. See the sugar candy there. For my lay-ins hives, I do wire them to the top of the overall frame, and that seemed to have worked out pretty well in the past. Obviously, if you already have comb, you don't want to cover up that entrance though. And they will gradually eat that sugar candy and let her out. Last year, I did a more gentle method where I let the bees march in on their own by placing the bee package next to the entrance. This year, there was some bad weather moving in and I kind of needed to get it done so unfortunately, I couldn't do the nice, easy, gentle method and just had to dump them in. And yeah, really, it's probably okay. That's what most people do. There really isn't too much to do after this, except for try not to pinch any bees as you put everything together. Put whatever other frames you want into the overall hive and close it up. Now, you don't need to leave an air space in the follower board in the lay-ins hive initially whenever you install, but you should do that later on. Leave at least a quarter inch gap. I do place the install box in front of the entrance. That way, any bees that are stuck in there will find their way into the hive when they start looking for, or at least picking up on the trail for the queen's pheromones. 
Moving on to the Langstroth hive I have, which is a flow hive. It's the same process. You let out the bees by first removing the sugar water can and then taking the queen cage out, securing that to one of the frames, placing that in there, and then putting all the bees into the hive. There is another yellow dot queen, as you can see. This is a this year queen. And then you just close up everything and try not to pinch any bees in the process. Here she is nice and secure with her attendants. Time to put her in there along with the rest of the bees. I don't like needing to smack the cage in order to get everybody out of there. It probably doesn't really hurt them too much, but it does get them more riled up. You can see how quickly uh, this little speed up is about 60 seconds that the bees go to cover up the queen because of the pheromones. Next steps are just gently placing the frames, especially because there's a mound of bees under there. You want to just kind of scooch them out of the side a little bit and close it all up. I do ratchet strap down my flow hive or my Langstroth hive just because of wind and if a bear were to break through maybe it gives a little bit of extra protection. And I place that bee box in front of the hive. Now here's the new experiment, the cathedral hive. This is a little bit trickier. Obviously the removal of everything is the same as it is on any of the other ones, but it's the installation that's going to be a little bit different just because I'm still figuring out how to do this with these new frame types with this type of top bar hive. and kind of going through things. I'm going to show in future videos a follow-up as to what happened with this hive. Uh, things were got a little bit interesting after the installation, but until then this is just the basic part of it. Brushing off the bees, removing the queen cage, securing that to one of the top bars, and then dumping the bees in and closing it up. You have to be careful since there's no comb on any of these frames and the fact that it's so light they can easily slide out of place and fall over. So you're just going to be aware of that whenever you're working with this. Dumping the bees in kind of goes as that goes and really nothing too exciting or special about that part of the process still. I did try to get some interesting close-ups of them dropping in though. I have this hive pretty far off the ground, so I had to get inventive to try to get the bee box in front of the hive, but it seemed to work out. And kind of as I mentioned, you have to be a little bit careful how you place these frames together because they are a little bit tricky with how they wiggle around and the way that they sit up on there because they can easily fall over or fall in since they don't have any support. Lo and behold, though, there was another queen in that package. You see there's a pink dot queen, which is not even a color they use. No idea why or what's going on there, but apparently there was a queen in with the other bees in that package. I was kind of baffled just staring at it for a while, like, okay, what do I do now? I even went back and checked on the queen cage that I had installed just to make sure I wasn't losing my mind. But indeed, there was a yellow dot queen in a cage, and then there was that one. I didn't know what was the best course of action, so I took that extra queen rather than, I didn't want to just kill her. Uh, and now we had competing pheromones in that package apparently on shipping and everything. And I put her instead in to the swarm box that I had, just thinking, well, maybe the bees will just kind of sort things out on their own. And that's where I actually ran into some problems that I will discuss in the next video. Anyways, the bees did crawl in here, and if you look, there's this gap on the front of the cathedral hive with that front board that's a little bit loose. Uh, I didn't like that part of the design, and I will address that also in a future video. But in any case, I closed things up and kind of hoped for the best with this hive. Kind of troubleshooting things as I get used to this hive, there were too many frames in there and actually couldn't even close it. So I did take out one of the follower frames in order to make a little bit of extra space. And then I was able to close it. It's a little bit unwieldy. There's no easy way to put that on hinges either, I don't believe. So I am still just kind of getting used to this hive though and its nuances. A little extra roof goes on in order to cover up the upper vents so no rain gets into the hive. And that is about all you have to do then to close things up. The swarm box I had that just has extra frames in it right now, I set next to the other hive. And like I said, I wanted the bees to kind of sort things out. They seem to be adhering more to the hive that I had installed them in. 
and though things actually ended up not going that great overall, and like I said, I will discuss that in the future. But the rest of the hives look great. Hive 1, which I had originally had taken some bees from to do a split, is going gangbusters. A lot of activity looked really good. Hive 2 that I split into, I uh, still wasn't so sure if we had a good queen in there yet or not. Not a lot of activity from that split and uh, looked like needed a little bit of extra work. Investigating the Langstroth Hive or the Flow Hive. Oh, well, looks like business as usual for a fresh install. We have bees that are out there fanning queen pheromones, trying to call in any stragglers. You know, the normal things that you would expect. And the same goes for Hive 3 or the Layin's Hive with the horses on it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time on the JRB Apiary.